hell. Wouldn't you agree? Nicolas Cage's acting ages like a fine wine. Be warned, there are definitely spoilers incoming. This movie reminds me a lot of Collateral with Tom Cruise, but they just let Cage go all unhinged method in the film, which is what you should do when you have Nicolas Cage in your project. Sympathy for the Devil stars Joel Kinnaman and I would appreciate it if you could have sympathy for the chair view and subscribe and leave a like. This is the second film director Yuval Adler worked with Joel Kinnaman on, the other being 2020's The Secrets We Keep. I have to praise the filmmakers for not using the typical sympathy for the devil by the Rolling Stones like Scorsese or someone would have because it's been used so often it's now a cliche. The music however is fantastic. In the credits, neither Cage nor Kinnaman's characters have names. Cage is credited as the passenger and Kinnaman is the driver. The driver arrives at the hospital as his wife is giving birth. The red-haired passenger gets in the car, dressed in a red suit, and tells driver to pick a card. I just knew you were going to say that card. He picks the ace of spades. It's not clear if he picked the wrong card, if the passenger would have let him go. With a boom boom maker pointed at his head, the driver, well, drives. Jesus Christ. Drive. How does Nick do these things with a straight face? What does that even mean? Driver's wife calls and he ignores it. You want me to take it? Shoot you through your stupid little earlobe right now. The bullet would, metaphorically speaking, tear through your wife. Son as well. What a delivery choice, Nick. At a gas station, he warns our driver to watch his speed. I have to watch the speed when we get back up on the highway. The passenger claims he wants to be driven to Boulder City Hospital so he can be there when his mother passes. She's a devout Catholic, so we gotta do last rides, get to have a car. Wife calls again. They answer it. She's in labor. <laughs> Leaning into the title, Nick says, For the devil may start to envy those who suffer too deeply and throw them out into heaven. The driver sees a cop and speeds up on purpose, so of course, they get pulled over. Nick warns him not to do anything stupid, then says to the cop, Oh no, not trouble. Please, Mr. Big Policeman, anything but trouble. No, no. Again, Cage's delivery on his lines makes this movie... Our passenger, of course, says, get behind me, Satan, and removes the cop from the situation and the mortal realm. This big cock cop is telling me to get out of the car. When asked why he's doing this, Kate says it's too early to spoil it. Driver jumps out of the car and tries to escape, but then Cage answers the wife's call, talking about his own wife's labor. And it was a golden shower explosion cascading all over the doctor's face. It was sexual, man. What the hell, Nick? They keep driving, and we get a story about passenger stuffy sinus problem caused by Nucus Man. And he scooped out a handful of boogers and he sprinkled them into my nose. Then they stop to get food. Passenger explains the real reasoning for this trip is that he's supposed to bring the driver to his associate in Boulder City. We are told this guy named Sullivan in Boston ended a bookkeeper for skimming money and will do the same to our driver. So clearly, Passenger knows our driver and who he really is. You're the witch in hell. There's a motorboat stuck in your mouth! Just shut up! Sit the fuck back down! He handcuffs our driver to the table and goes ballistic on the place. The wife calls again, or so we think. Honey, I'm um the passenger demands the truth, but the driver refuses. You're awesome, buddy! I'm not who you think I am! I've never been told you who I think you are, so how could you know you're not who I think you are? Because the man won't talk and punches him in the nose, the passenger burns the place down, takes every witness out with his force multiplier. 
Driver tries to escape, but little Nikki calls out to him, letting us know Driver's real name is James, at least they used to be. And after he offers to let James's wife go, he willingly keeps driving the guy. The passenger continues talking about his wife. Now, I don't know if this was improvised, but it probably was when Nick gives this line. Did you hear the rabbits? Screaming. God, I love this man's acting. Driver says his name is David Chamberlain, but our passenger is convinced his name was James. James slash David crashes the car, and as passenger bleeds on the ground, it turns out that, what a twist, his name was previously James, and he was the man who bought the job that took out our passenger's wife and daughter. But he couldn't live with the guilt. I knew God was evening the score when our firstborn died. The crazy man then says his son was God giving him back the girl's life who he had taken, and now his wife is pregnant again. James then uses his hands and, um, takes the driver's breath away and lays him out so David looks like a victim. David plays back his messages and his wife says they actually had a girl. He then repeats, I am David Chamberlain, to try and convince himself. And the movie ends. So why is this movie called Sympathy for the Devil? I have no idea. Let me know if you do. But they want you to think Nick Cage is playing the devil with the red hair and suit until the final reveal. I enjoyed the movie immensely, though IMDb has it at an average rating. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. It's a you. Come and be informant. Has a fun too. Fun too. There's only one.